is the heart and soul of our sport, where these players strive to become who they're truly meant to be. No more break, it's time for action. Welcome to Overwatch Contenders. Hello and welcome everybody to the, today's second broadcast of the week. We get through the first one yesterday. Today we get to round out the week. We got a couple of good matches for you. Starting off with a banger. Mox, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm honestly really looking forward to this. I think we're going to see a little bit of movement away from the Winston in this first match, which I'm looking forward to it. I know you're probably looking forward to it too, because a lot of your matches in the NA side have just been Winston versus Winston. So come over here. We, we get the fun. We get the Ryan this semester. And as for Peek Check, they're not even playing today. It's going to be different teams entirely. Yeah, we've got plenty of good ones up. First up, Raspberry Racer versus Play. You alluded to a, a lack of Winston, though we'll, we'll see just how much of that comes out within this match. Following that up is Adaraxate versus Team Peps. And I'll say, as far as standings go, the two matches we've got today are, are about as close as they can get. There's some deception to be had here with, I think, strength of these teams. Raspberry Racers, I think, still has a little something to hide. But if we do take a look at those standings, you'll see that, surprisingly, play sits above Raspberry Racers. If you showed me those two rosters at the beginning of the season, never would I have thought that. Yeah, but like you said, a lot of it is to do with the bracket, right? Raspberry Racers have had to go through all of the quote-unquote tough teams, and even then, they've actually done surprisingly well. They were able to take one map off Twisted Minds, one map out uh, of Ex Oblivioni, one map off SR Peachick. The only team where they got zero and freed has actually been Oh Yeah, but we know that when you play up against Oh Yeah, you're going to come up against some certain shenanigans that you don't always have that scrim practice for, so it does make sense that that is the team with some of these teams do struggle somewhat slightly. For Raspberry Racers, however, it can only go up from here, but what we have to see from this team is a decisive victory to show the only reason they're so low down in the standings at the moment is purely because of all of the teams they've faced up against being so much stronger in the current climate. Yeah, plays very much had kind of the opposite schedule, right? They've played most of the, the teams that are on the lower end of the table right now, having gotten rid of almost all of them except for Raspberry Racers and one other team I think they have at the end of their schedule, but their opportunities are running few and far between. So if they want to get up, get past that A spot, I, I think today's win is actually vital, critical to mission success at the end of the season, should they want to keep things going on in the bracket. But that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking things down. Let's take a look at these teams, starting off with Raspberry Racers, a team that needs surprisingly no introduction, despite their record not being the greatest right now. There's a lot of experience they're bringing to the table. A lot of experience and also a lot of curving away from the meta. Both you and I were discussing literally before this broadcast went live whether or not we're going to get to see a repeat run back of the Jikaru Orisa that we got to see yesterday in their matchup against Ataraxia. Alexi and Cloud as well doing a very good job of being able to flex so that Alexi can play that Sojin but also the Echo and then Cloud can actually pick up whether it's the Tracer, or whether it's the Echo. There's always a lot of really good versatility coming through from this DPS lineup but looking at their opponent, I'm already predicting that we're going to be seeing the swerve away from the Winston. Play have two tanks. When they want to run dive, they have TVNT. When they want to run Reinhardt, they're on Groink, and that is the guy that is going to be starting off with this team so far. Yeah, Groink brings a lot to the table with respect to the Reinhardt, but as well, we talked about just how much uh, experience Raspberry Racers has. Play doesn't really come to the table with that much on this roster, but I will say one player who has uh, almost more experience than the rest of the roster combined, Momentum. Mm -hmm. I mean, a player who has been around for ages now brings a lot of seniority to this team. So I'm excited to see exactly what they can do when they rally behind them. When you talk to them last, right? Momentum was talking about how they wanted to form that consistency. Well, the days absolutely did they do that. They've shown us consistently that they want to play this Reinhardt early on in the series. Groink will bring that to the table. That being said, I, I think there's a bit of a difficulty. We talked about the flexibility of the DPS line coming out from Raspberry Racers, but one player who hasn't been so flexible lately is Jay Karu, right? Over in the stint in NA when he played with Wiss, was playing exclusively Winston. Last week, we saw an Orisa, an Orisa that didn't do all that much, didn't really make much of a, a splash in the water, but up against a team that wants to play Reinhardt constantly, all of a sudden, it sounds like a much larger problem to solve. 
Yeah, it's definitely going to be one thing that uh, Raspberry Races are going to be aware of. However, we have got to see play on broadcast. They played Sheer Cold on broadcast on day one, which is the first time that we actually got to see them debut into the contender scene. And that again goes back to the issue of consistency. Like you said, we got to talk to Momentum after the match and he actually admitted that he's not really that used to playing Mercy for the team. It's literally just because Kyo was being such a monster on the Ash that the team decided, okay, he's hitting all of these shots. He's going to be able to carry us through this match, we're just going to pocket and put all of those resources onto him. And looking at the results for the team after those matches, consistency is definitely going to be something that this team needs to be able to build into if they want to be able to stick around the tier 2 scene. And it's definitely going to have to come into play on this first point of control because it's going to be Li Jiang. And that means that more than likely, especially if it's someone like Control Center, we're going to get to see Kyo pick up that Symmetra or potentially even Pac as well, who has been able to flex onto the sim when he played for Team Spain in the Overwatch World Cup conferences and get Groink in to these fights as quickly as possible so that he's not vulnerable and leaving the rest of the team hiding behind his shield before the Orisa can poke everyone down. Yeah, well, that's the big question that everything revolves around is do we actually see the Orisa? Mm. We, we saw a, a kind of conservation of the Orisa for a little bit, right? Playing it for one or two maps from Raspberry Racers previously and then a concession saying, okay, you know what? This just isn't working for us. We have J. Carr. Why are we not just playing Winston? Go run at the rest of the series. Works out great. But now you have this question of, okay, now we've just kind of settled into the Winston. We've decided that it is working well for us, or at least it seems that like, that's what they settled on last week. It, it's a, a real toss up for them to make this decision. Yes, in theory, it counters Groink, but on the other hand, they didn't see much success with it prior. So do they still want to go with it? Yeah, it's always a real tough one too when you look at what else is going to be running alongside this Reinhardt because a lot of the time when you have that Reinhardt, you obviously have the Baptiste and the Lucio as well. And that makes diving a lot harder if you don't have DPS to be able to back you up, something like a Tracer. But Cloud has been showing such promise on the Tracer. Honestly, like looking at his performance yesterday up against Adaraxia, he was having some absolutely stellar pulse bomb attachments where he was literally going back to back pulse bomb sticks and he would pick up double pulse bomb kills on the same two players twice in a row, which is such a huge feat. And a lot of it is going to revolve around pressuring that backline so that the Reinhardt doesn't have things like the immortality field to allow him to be as aggressive as he wants. Yeah, and when you're talking about that pop-off that Cloud has, right? You have to think about who else is here to pop off. You bring up Keo. yes, as being a, an inconsistent member, but one that is often there for play when they need him most. But I see a lot of those members on Raspberry Racers. Raspberry Racers has a, a whole litany of players that are capable of having not just consistent performances, but having those high points as well without really ever dipping too far. And that's what's scary is, you know, one out of five of these players starts going off. Any player from that DPS line, right? Alexi, Cloud starts going crazy. Jay Karu breaks out the Primal Blade and the match can really devolve. And one player alone often isn't enough to take that on. So it's not just the consistency that play needs, but they need multiple players to start hitting those peaks at the same time. Yeah, and Drake as well, I feel like, is one of those players that we see in the tier 2 scene a lot of the time on thing, uh, things like the Ana really being able to land some vital sleep darts and antinades, but we never really talk about it a lot of the time because if we're not talking about a support player, it means you're doing your job, right? You're not getting picked out early from a fight because you're in the wrong position. You're not throwing your ultimate in at an inopportune moment or using utility a little bit too early, which is the absolute death sentence of a support at the moment. That's literally why Tracer and Sombra are so prevalent. Part of the reason that they can just make their way into the backline and burn you out, throw you into such a horrible position where you either die with your utility intact, thus you don't do your job properly, Properly, or you throw your utility in because you've been bullied and you still lose the fight regardless because they just have better sustain at the end of the day and it's all been a big old bait. Other way to start the backline dives. Let us know who you think is going to be taking away the victory today. One for Raspberry Racers, two for play. Give us your opinions, your predictions, your favorite team. Honestly, don't care how you vote. As long as you vote. That's what's most important. We're starting things off here, though, on Control Center, which I think is kind of the, the dream start for Groinkin crew.
It, it definitely feels like it, right? This is where the Rhine is going to be at its strongest, where you're going to be able to take these fights in generator rooms so that you have as little space as possible for these teams to be able to try and avoid the cleave. But then again, the problem becomes it's going to be pretty predictable where the Reinhardt wants to take the fight. If Raspberry Racers decide, okay, we're going to ignore side entirely and just go straight to point to be able to lengthen that distance and provide even more space to be able to try and poke Grunt Shield down, player gonna have a real tough time actually initiating into these engagements. Raiders are showing no sign of an Arisa yet. Honestly, uh, again, it's an if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of situation for them. Jakaru's Winston is playable virtually everywhere with the experience that it brings to the table with this particular hero. Alexi's gonna be on the hands though for that shield pressure. That's a lot. I mean, we've seen teams tech in an Echo, tech in a Hanzo, specifically to bully Groink, right? Mm. Keep him at arm's length. That's the exact plan here. Alexi's staying very far back, away from any sort of teleporter shenanigans that play could go for. Continues to chip away at the shield. Reinhardt. Too much we had until this point unlocks, though. So. Big anti nade from Andreko, but he pays the price! Play teleport directly on top of him and punish the Ana. Taking advantage of the high ground. Now you've got a lot of players set up there as well. Reflect has a beautiful angle to take down the rest of this fight. Yeah, and Jake Haru, because he doesn't have that Anna sustain, just can't provide the space. And there's Alexi who has to try and go for a really big peak and unfortunately falls prey to pack as a result. And play, even though they all got anti and that immortality field got forced so early on with that aggression, are just able to actually contain themselves on that point. And now Raspberry Racers have to set themselves into a dive on a backline that's already going to be defended. Yeah, this is a difficult point to approach, right? To chip away at Groik's shield is no longer a consistent strategy. Once he does get forced out, and Draco's able to pick up momentum on the back end of that as well. A failed teleport forward from play as they come back a man short. That's always going to be the now. risk. Like, you want to save that Lucio amp, and as a result, you just leave yourself too vulnerable when Groink's not there to shield. Groink is here to shield, but honestly, not for long. That health bar does not look particularly well for wear. Lux is able to continue to pressure down this team bit by bit. This should be more than enough, especially with the nano being thrown in for Raspberry Racing to take the point over. Oh, they almost get reflexed. Haven't been able to know, but that pulse from Kalon to Groink should seal the deal. It's just going to be a matter of stall the play but momentum goes down incredibly quickly and now Raspberry Racers, especially with the Dragon Strike, can just look to try to hold on to this point as long as possible. They're going to be able to use the Hanzo Ultimate to stall and zone out Pax Blizzard. They just have to not get caught out by the Shatter and I love that they're separating themselves into two separate pockets so if the Shatter does come down, half of the team's going to be able to peel. Dragon out to start things here for Raspberry Racers. Attempt from play to chase down Gustav, who gets away scot-free. Four ultimates up, though, to try and force an engagement. Now they start with a sound barrier teleport play from play, but they don't really cover too much distance. Groink's really swinging at air right now, and Raspberry Racers have disengaged a large part of it. Now can look to re-engage the fight with a Primal Rage. Play off the back of that, they force a Blizzard out. This has been three for one for Raspberry Racers. This is Black Friday deals they're getting right now, and not a kill has been found for play until finally Jaycaru topples over. But at what cost? Groink is traded out, despite all the ultimates having been spent. Raspberry Racers are coming out ahead if not, maybe even here, play still has a little bit left in this one. They've ticked the point over, but the re-engage is a lot quicker because of Jake Carr being on Winston. Yeah, the rubber band is here from the dive. Clyde with the pulse is one thing you have to watch out for. Pulse bomb out. Groink getting pressured again. That earlier spawn from Raspberry Racers looks great for them, but the health bar needs time to reset, and play seemed to have found a moment to stabilize here and as well build up a couple of those critical ultimates. It's just a moment though, Andreku is boarding towards the Nano and this is when Raspberry Racers are actually going to push him with aggression. They have a couple of movements, a couple of ways they can counterplay this. A solo shatter on a Jaycaru is absolutely the answer! Putting the monkey into an early grave seems like a good one, but unfortunately, Quink is just taking far too much and now left in front of the amplification matrix that's creating a real dip in the fight here for play. Fortunately, Reflect has made something of that moment. Act traded out as a push goes onto the high ground. Play still looking for any sort of foothold 
in this fight, but it's just not to be had. They can't claim the space they need to to actually get that Symmetra in and doing damage. Yeah, but that is Dragon Strike burn out. Primal isn't there for Jaycaro, and Draco doesn't have Nano Gustav, no Sam Arpus the same. Blade just need to be able to tap themselves onto point, throw with a Blizzard, find that flip, and then sustain through. I mean, it's a long shot, but Cloud down it seems a lot less so. Blizzard out. Freeze onto the monkey, play, flip it over, 97% quickly will turn into 100. There's not much Raspberry Racers can do. It wasn't even the ultimates that did it. That kill onto the Tracer was so critical in making sure that there was no answer for Raspberry Racers. Yeah, when you're sitting around about 90% of point control and you have Soundbar when you know the other team doesn't, just use it to be able to get yourself aggressively onto that point. Because the problem was they were holding onto it for so long that every single time Bradford Racers were able to land anything, just a stray shot from Alexi and Antony from Andreku, it just forced play to have to wait for all of those cooldowns to come back online. And that's what Dive really does punish hesitation and allowed Bradford Racers to start equalizing that point percentage pretty quickly. But play seeing that opportunity, finally throw themselves onto point, throw the blizzard in, zone Raspberry Racers out, and there's nothing they can do about it. As now we're going to head towards gardens, and this is where the Reinhardt becomes a little bit less stable. You have to rely so much more on the Symmetra Teleporter to be able to make sure that you don't get concussed off of this map with Clyde picking up the Fara. I mean, it's really uphill from here for the Reinhardt composition, right? They got the best map out of the way. They're going to have to dig one of these from the trenches should they want to win this map, but... Looking good for it so far. After having won the previous point, gotten a lot of percentage on the board early, <laughs> looking to get more on with a pick on to Andreco. Raspberry Racers are forced back, and this is what got play that point cap last time, mm. right? Got them all that early percentage. Uh, looking at the stats, play died almost 50% more on the first sub map. But because they got that early advantage like they're getting now, they are able to take away that win. Yeah, and they're taking away the fire poke too. Clyde may be pretty close to barrage, but he hasn't been able to find a kill because of the Symmetra teleporting everyone out. Uh, the health bars are still low. Chipping away is Cloud. Always dangerous in the skies. A jump in from Jay Karu. Cloud follows up with damage as well. They try to answer with a TP, but not everybody makes it through. Momentum gets the short end of the stick after a trade for Andreco goes down. Raspberry Racer is still successful, though. And their take of the point. The teleport is only good for one kill. Raspberry Racers now are going to be able to have ultimates to be able to stall through. So even if play try to go for these really quick teleports onto point to take as many points as they possibly can, not just to be able to build ultimates up fast, but also to try and deny Raspberry Racers from being able to cycle through one fight ultimate at a time as we're actually going to get to see a replay. There's the burden they making sure to lock down Andreiku so that play can just run straight on the Ana. I mean, Andreiku is the primary target of play. Not many other players are even teleportable in terms of targeting. Banana boost though with an overclock spells the death of Keo basically instantly. Alexi oh. making quick work of this one. Raspberry races, they pressed over 40% on the point. Oh, that is devastating for play. They overlap both support ultimates door. Ouch. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> we thought it was bad already, but that's that makes it really ugly. Yeah, that is absolutely 100% worth it for us with races because you're still in control of the point. You know that play are going to have to teleport. You know that there's going to be a dead eye, but you can just position to be able to take the Cassidy down so quickly now that he's lacking that extra 25. As they're going bridge. I feel like they feel the pressure they're putting on Cloud. And they want to take advantage of it, but they are just waiting for that TP to come online. A lot of ultimates up for Raspberry Racers. How do you even respond to this, right? A, a Deadeye, a Photon Barrier are your only recourse. Meanwhile, a Barrage comes out from the sky. A Primal Rage is still up for Raspberry Racers. Few ways really into this fight for play, unless they could maybe burn Jake Haru down early in this fight. Symmetra gone, though. Spells the death of this push. Raspberry Racers now at 90% are final fight territory, maybe even beyond that. They did manage to find Cloud. Growing still alive with the bias strike actually finds a Draco. Oh my goodness! Play, because they can rubber band so quickly back in, can actually find the flip. And Raspberry Racers have actually been forced off of the Farah onto the Tracer. But now, seeing that they've lost the fight, that they're not going to be able to stall back in, the Pharmacy comes out once more. I mean, they have plenty of time to poke. So I like the Farah Mercy. Uh, time is on their side, but. Play shouldn't have gotten that re-engagement really at all. They had no right. I think Grunk TP's in at just the last second. Now with that poke beginning though, the seconds are waning away for play and they still don't have any tools. The sound barrier is a far cry away from being available for this fight. 
Might oh, need it by the time that lamp. poke damage actually comes in. Lamp's already been forced out, absolutely. A teleporter's attempted by play, but not a single player lies in sight. Even Alexi gets away from the teleporter. That's a key cooldown now gone for the next 10, 15 seconds or so until that critical ability is back up. They're just eating damage from this far. A nano boost in on top of the monkey as well comes out, but momentum did get a sound barrier up just in the nick of time. Not enough so to save Keo, but the rest of the team remains upright. No trade is found off the back of it though, and Raspberry Racers, they're only coming up on more. Yeah, they're sitting ducks at the moment up against this pharmacy. The second that that lamp is gone, the second that the amplification matrix is used, it was a gambit from play. The second that the poke phase forced that lamp, Reflect knows there is only one way that play is going to be able to live to survive through a barrage, and that is throwing amp to zone Raspberry Racers so that momentum can build into the sound barrier. But again, we see the same problem where it's had every single time Groink is away from one of these squishies and not just babysitting 24 7 with that Rhine Shield. Cloud is there and making sure that the pharmacy is showing its presence and absolutely smashing through every single one of these squishies. And the scary part is that Pharmacy's not gone anytime soon, right? Night Market mm. really just spells more disaster for the team that fears this Pharmacy. And it does feel like player making a lot of the right decisions. They're on the right page for a lot of this. The fight plans are coming in with, right? Waiting for the sound barrier. If it was a half second earlier, it would have been better. But everything just needs to be tightened up a little bit. If they want to find success. The teleport out here does get them to point. As expected, Raspberry Racers will be the aggressors onto what is a, a fortress set up by play here early on. Brink, yeah, going for that, just trying to build themselves onto this point so that they can survive as long as possible with the natural covering. The May War going to make it harder for Jake Harry to be able to escape, but it's not the ball that you have to worry about. The ball is literally bells and whistles, a distraction technique to pull your focus away from the true threat. Farah and the Sojourn, both of who can flank. DP out onto Andreco. Wisely dodged, though, by the Ana player. Putting so much pressure now onto play who are grouped up outside they the point. Flanked. In fact, they They've allowed a flip to come through. If they don't get a trade here, oh, it's going to be a disaster. Alexi's already caught the backside of momentum as he retreated onto the point. What do you actually do to, to respond to this? There's nothing left in the tank. Play have been completely outwitted, outmatched, and outkited by Andreco, who I, I think really set that up yeah. by avoiding the teleport. Forget Shikari's bells and whistles. Andreku forced play to fall for that hook, line, and sinker, and they found a flip. And now the Farah comes into so much danger for play to face against because every single time you try and just teleport to point, the Rhine Shield is going to be absolutely shattered. They throw the teleport just to bait Rapid Races away, but there's the barrage. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That's going to be an easy one. Easy pickup for Gustav as well. Play had nothing coming in there and attacking into this far, like you said, it's just so difficult. We need to see the cast swap. We need to see the cast swap. Now, Pack can play the Symmetra. I know you want to be able to use this Blizzard. You want to keep the Symmetra so you can just teleport to point. But the problem is Raspberry Racers can literally just avoid the Blizzard or have Jake just throw the hammer mines on top of it. And as you say it, there come those mines. Dropped onto point, forcing play off to the back edge all the way to coast on this map. One percentage points more before point. play take it over. A teleport onto Andreco, this time far more successful than the first. Allows Groin to get back in on the point, but doesn't really find the kill that they're looking for. And Alexi, who's still a major threat on the Sojourn. Kyo can charge up the beam, but nothing's really going to answer, especially with the res having come through on Andreco. That extends this team fight significantly for Raspberry Racers, who have a ton of sustain. Play use Blizzard though. They're trying to just take down Jokaru so they can stall this fight a little bit longer, but that's one ultimate gone. Now they're going to be relying on a Shatter to be able to win a fight when Raspberry Racers, all of their main players, all of their damage components are going to be away from the spacing that that Shatter is going to provide for this team. It's a tough Shatter to land, but fortunately they're playing defense on the point, so Jokaru might again be on the, the wrong end of the solo Shatter beat stick, so to speak. Not Jake, you have to worry about. Yeah, it's Cloud. There's a lot of damage threat from the side. The barrage is up. Player very aware of this. But with the immortality field, that's it. That lights out the immortality field. Such an important tool to deny that ultimate. It's about blood in the water and strike while the iron's hot. The trades are good for play, though. A nice shot from Pack. A nice fire strike from Groink, and all of a sudden things are looking good for play. 
Yeah, now we're gonna be able to properly see Pack on this may really find a lot of impact, just denying Jaycaru's mobility. Because they know where the Hammond is, but Reflex, who was split away from the team, so isn't actually able to get into this Metro TP in time and goes down stalled again. Such sick foresight from Asbury Racers to cut off the spawns, to cut off the lifeline from play. Now Mines to take the point back over. They still got a nano boost to extend the fight should they need it, but they don't. 95% for play. They just need one fight, but it's going to be a hard one to get. Oh, they're going to be going into a nano boosted Farah in control of a choke with no traditional hit scan other than reflect on the Baptiste, who again is just taking so much poke damage. That was almost a successful two tap onto the Baptiste. I mean, it's still doable. They can get to point. Find a good opportunity to use that sound barrier. No, <laughs> getting to point is now a lot harder. Getting to point is now going to be next to impossible considering off of the poke damage, Cloud is up to another barrage. Oh, and the spawn's just too far away. Kyo swaps off the Symmetra. They've got to charge in, use the sound barrier to engage. Not even that's enough health to get past. Oh my God. It has been a while since I have seen a more impactful pick than that. The Symmetra goes in the entire game plan, just completely crumbles for play. Yeah. That is the problem when you're running this composition, right? You need the Symmetra, otherwise the Reinhardt shield is going to be absolutely shredded before you even get within 20 meters of the point. And as a result, when you're up against a Pharah who's going to be uncontested and hitting every single shot with a Mercy damage boosting 24-7 since you're doing no damage to pull the Mercy off of the Pharah and force that resurrection, you're going to get two tapped. You're not going to be able to survive to the point. But the problem then becomes if you're running the Symmetra, you get to the point, but then you walk off it because you fell for the oldest trick in the whoop of the book. Ye old, I am a damsel in distress. Poor defense, Susanna. Please don't chase after me and ignore the objective. Surprise is what we wanted all along. You're not going to have a fun time navigating any choke afterwards, though. Yeah, I mean, it's the oldest trick in the book, but certainly not the easiest trick in the book to pull off. On Draco's positioning and spacing to avoid those TPs was, I mean, bar none perfection mm. in a lot of these situations. Yes, on Draco still went down in a lot of those situations, but forced them to expend a lot more resources than they wanted to to do so. And that's where you that, see you're running Mercy. So every single time you lose the Ana, <laughs> <laughs> as, as long as Andreku dies, but we see Cloud come in with a really impactful play to just ironically force play to hit pause, you're still going to actually be able to time the res. So a lot yeah. of the time, even though they traded the Ana, it was like for five seconds. And then immediately he was back in the mix. Yeah, it created a lot of trouble, but that's, uh, again, the difficulty we see, right? To get one player on that side is, you know, doable for play. But that one player isn't mission critical. And I think that's, I mean, if we want to go into like the, the real spaghetti and the code of Overwatch 2 and talk about why we don't see as much like Reinhardt rush and stuff, the players on the rush composition aren't nearly as individually capable as the players coming out of a dive composition, right? Mm. They lose their honor. Raspberry Racers still have a chance in a fight, yeah. right? Whereas the Symmetra goes for play and it's over. It's completely done. There's nothing left. They lose their flex support. It's done. The Lucio's there. They can't disengage. It's done. And all the time in the world that's given away to the dive composition on a map like Li Zhang to poke away to try and find one of those kills, the value that they get from that kill is significantly higher than anything that they could hope to get from killing on Draco one time when there's a mercy on them. Yeah, and no surprises, that's why we're going to be seeing the Rhine, not Symmetra TP off into the distance, but definitely substitute into the distance. TVNT is going to be coming through to play for this team. No longer are we going to have that Reinhardt really heavily relying on a Symmetra TP. Now more than likely we're going to be able to see that dive for dive, but TVNT doesn't really favor the Winston. In the past, he's decided to try and opt into something like the Diva, which honestly can work out pretty well given that Cloud can be able to flex onto things like the Farah. When you look at where we're going for that second map, the option is most definitely there for a pharmacy to be able to control some of these avenues of choke. Yeah, Midtown's gonna be our second map pick. I'm honestly welcome. I, I, I think this is a map that has been warranted in the map pool for some time. I think it offers a lot of flexibility to the teams that want to play things that aren't just the Winston and Raspberry Racers, like you said, could certainly still run it here if they want to, right? Jcar could pilot that Winston virtually anywhere mm. and make it look good and, and like it's meta. But play, on the other hand, I think definitely want to change things up. You said they bring a lot to the table in terms of counters to that far mercy. For me, I'm looking at Keo to really shut that down. We need a strong hit scan presence on this map, whether there's a far or not, we need a strong hit scan mm. presence on this map.
Yeah, we, we do need that hit scan. It was sorely lacking when we were looking at how Li Zhang was panning out. And again, that just played into the space that Raspberry Races had in terms of being able to position themselves. They had so much more monopoly on all of those off angles and every single one, whether it was control center with the Hanzo or whether or not it was just the pharmacy being able to run absolutely rampant with the burst damage on Night Market. And I'm hoping that we do get to see that crossfire come through with Keo coming in on something like either a Cassidy or an Ash, and then Swag Money being able to flex onto things like the Echo, so that you can set up a crossfire and try and actually put a little bit more pressure onto the backline. Because every single time we saw utility coming through from either Reflex or Momentum, it was forced, right? You definitely could tell that they did it with gritted teeth. And when you compare Raspberry Races to when they wanted to use things, they did it at their own leisure. They were absolutely unpressured, uncontested for the entire thing. It's not just that lack of pressure, it's the flexibility that I think Raspberry Reaches bring to the table. That experience that they have, the ability to stay calm in the match, to come up with new and creative fight plans, different routes of getting through the fights as opposed to the much more structured play that we're seeing from play. When it's like, okay, game plan, TP onto somebody. Okay, that didn't work. Oh, guess that's it, guys. <laughs> Pack it up. Like, the game plans from... Uh, from Raspberry Races have been far more fluid, and I think that really bodes well for them, especially coming into a midtown that I suspect the comps that we start on are not gonna be the comps that we finish on. There's a lot of changing to be done here from these teams to specifically counter things to try and play into the map geometry. So for play, that consistency might not need to be there. They might need a little bit more of that pop-off, a little bit more of that fluidity if they wanna get through midtown. Yeah, especially when you look at how you want to position your hitscan on point A and compared to B. The Cassidy, especially on point B, there's so much focus on being able to control that high ground. You want to be able to swap onto things like the Hansel or the Ash, or you're just going to be able to transition really smoothly from one to the other. So you can peel a lot faster, as opposed to the Cassidy, who until lifts are uh, put onto this map, is unfortunately going to be stuck having to climb the stairs. Yeah, but I understand why, right? The the Hanzo, the Ash can get pressured out so consistently here by a lot of things. Harder to dive, or harder to get away from the dives. They're playing the Ash. The Hanzo has damage, but doesn't have the hit scan should they offer up that far Mercy again. The Cassidy really is that middle ground. Can be defended by the D.Va fairly easily. Sticks close, takes down Cloud already. Having a good showing here on Midtown. Yeah, but here we go. Raspberry Race is going back to the drawing board. Pulling from all of their different compositions that they can field onto. Alexi goes onto the Sombra. They see the Cassidy. You can only have one burden aid. If you bait it out, you're going to create so much more space for the rest of your players. Yeah, I brought it up, right? We're going to be playing a little bit of musical heroes here. Already coming to fruition. Raspberry Racers have cleared the choke, but decide not to dive all the way to point. Instead, looking to aggress onto this high ground. Accruing resources to start out, trying to stage on an opposing high ground so Cloud can blink over. It's a little disjointed, especially leaving Gustav behind hurts. But the Diva's still under more pressure than Jaycaru is. Jaycaru topples first though, Reflect doing a great job of keeping TVNT up. They're really trying to go for TVNT. Alexi on the Sombra's looking for the hacks. That's the second time we see the Diva hack back to back, but Reflect entirely uncontested, being able to fall back onto Tunnel is able to keep the Diva in the mech. And as a result, Raspberry Races can't c uh, fully commit to this dive. Are charging up towards ultimates though, 65% to an EMP is a really far cry. You don't want to have to spend that on A just to get a fight win. They're really lacking other tools. The nano boost is almost up here. Luxie is forced out though, and if they try to engage with the nano boost right now, they're going to be down one player in that Sombra to follow up on the Winston. So they've got to wait a couple more seconds, but waiting means you're getting poked away at by Keo, which also isn't fun. Finally, the cavalry all gets there, but it's too little too late. Nobody can follow up on the nano boosted dive from Jaycaru. Swag Money is found in the meantime on a side lane, fortunately by Cloud, but getting more than that's going to be so difficult without Jaycaru. EMP's out, but again, it's late, and it's not coordinated by Raspberry Racers. They are losing their marbles right now. Yeah, TVNT is able to get back in the mech with the self-destruct as well, and play have made sure that Raspberry Racers off of that EMP only pick up a single tick. Now they're going to have a primal and a pulse bomb as well as a rally, but play have control of choke yet again, and the disjointed dive has to find a target in the Cassidy. Keo fortunately was able to escape the initial clutches of a primal rage from Jake Carter, but can't beat Alexi. 
second engagement onto the point looks far better for Raspberry Erasers. They will get a point A cap, but it's been a, a pretty costly endeavor, Mox. Mm, and you have to ask yourself too, where's the snowball potential? Well, that might be one of them. Nice good stall pick onto TVNT. So play not actually going to have a tank to be able to survive or use that defense matrix to be able to peel does mean they're having to play a little bit further back than they would like, allowing Clyde to be able to approach with the pulse bomb and try and find an entrance onto one of these squishies. Evan makes a swap over to a Junker Queen. The theoretical counter here to the Winston, at least when you can hold the space, that shotgun is a major damage threat for Jay Karu with the pulse bomb there. There's still a lot of major damage threats that Raspberry Racers have to offer up. EMP, namely one of them, 90% there. I think if Jaycaru, oh my god, wait, this is a dream come true for Raspberry Racers if they can just get Jaycaru out, but oh my goodness, Jaycaru is not having a fun time. Reflex actually swapped to the Kiriko as well. Now that TVNT is off of that D.Va, you don't have to have all of that burst sustain to keep the mech alive. The Junker Queen with the shout comes with that self sustain, and you can actually prioritize just surviving the dive over being able to keep your tank's legs up. An extra bit of CC as well the Junker Queen provides. Throwing the knife into Jaycaru, won the last fight. EMP this time wins this fight. Keo taking down half HP, easily finished off. Jaycaru continues to zap away at the back line of play, but it's a pretty straightforward plan and execution for Raspberry Racers. Yeah, good ultimate usage. EMP into Nano straight away. Fight win, find the kills that you need. Problem is that there is another fight coming, and now it's going to rely on Stall, Gustav, and Jaycaru. Both are going to have crowd control, but play start things off, now having to be on the back foot with the rally. Well, the rally hasn't put them on the back foot too much. That will, though. Full spawn on the Gustav cuts the sustain in half here for Raspberry Racers. They've got a lot of space, but... How exactly do they want to take this point over? They have so much damage pressure in front of them that Raspberry Racers can't actually afford to sit on this cart. A cart tries and pays the ultimate price. Yeah, and for Raspberry Racers, it wasn't even a case of we're going to bait them into using ultimates. They equalize ultimate usage too. Jaycaru now is actually going to go onto the Orisa to try to deal with the rampage that is going to be coming through just to try and stop it in its tracks. Alexi might be able to find a good hack on it as well, because the Rampage is going to be the one thing Raspberry Racers without a Kiriko have to be so concerned about. They don't have many good fights after this, right? Minute 20 on the clock, they're paying the price for the time that they lost earlier on. This has really got to be the better opportunities that they get. Full spawn from Cloud, maybe you could see them through, especially with Heaven having been dropped low early on in this fight. I love that Raspberry Racers actually aren't giving them any targets, though. If it's a Rampage, it's only going to be a Rampage onto Jaycaru. They'll accept it, though, anti-ing the Orisa. Momentum taken down on the back end, though, and the Orisa has no problem disengaging back up onto that high ground. This swap has proven immaculate for Raspberry Racers as it works out exactly to plan. Now Tevin left with nowhere to go, twiddling their thumbs in the middle of a battlefield in which they are completely lost. Raspberry Racers, half a B point with a phenomenal swap over to the Orisa. The impact really can't be overstated here, but wait, 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 wait. Maybe, maybe there's a chance? Oh, they no, have to use the There was a chance. There was a chance and both teams saw it and both teams as a result, do Count them with me. Nano boosted Orisa, okay, fine. You needed to win the fight. Deadeye, EMP. Both committed at the tail end. Play trying to use the Deadeye to just take Raspberry Racers down before the cart could finalize checkpoint. Alexi throwing the EMP and just trying, knowing without like the tank, that your squishies were about to be picked off. And as a result, it's eaten into snowball potential available for Raspberry Racers. Play still having the Junker Queen, but Swag Money now goes on to the Echo Kyo, the Ash Momentum, the Mercy to be able to pocket. They understand Ultimate Economy is against Raspberry Racers at the moment. They just have to play mobile enough to stay out of the range of terror search and rally. Yeah, Alexi's doing everything in their power to try and build up another EMP to see to the end of this point. They don't have time, really. They can't sustain these fights because Swag Money swapped over to that Echo. Jaycaru in the fight prior was able to, to live for a long time to kind of sit there on the point and bide time for the Sombra. Not the case anymore with Focusing Beam offering up just too much damage to really contend with. And an early pick, that's not really much more than a scrap by Raspberry Racers. There's a lot of spy check potential here as well. Alexi is going to be coming into this next fight with the EMP, but the question becomes, can anyone follow up on it? Yes, you're going to have a nano boost, but player are just going to be playing so far back that if they get caught by it, they can still sustain. With Jaycaru getting fun policed, this is difficult to say the least. Lacking the rally as well after having spent it early in the last uh, engagement. 
The MP is up, but Alexi, Alexi is, I mean, more than two-day delivery. This is a very late EMP. One that play, I mean, this is an easy disengage. More than an easy disengage. They have moonwalked away from Raspberry Racers, looking cool as ever. By the really time the EMP comes out, Swag Money actually had the duplicate onto J. Caro, and as a result, Raspberry Racers didn't have a tank to be able to create the space. They'll get a little cheeky extra percentage of distance with Cloud, pulling a little bit of a soon on the payload, but that's going to be all they're able to pick up. Yeah, there's nothing left here. Fortunately for Asbury Racers, I, I think this is something that they've dug out of nothing, having mm. capped two and a half points here. It could have been a lot worse. Point A, could have been a was looking a. incredibly <laughs> difficult for them. Yeah, it, it could have been a, a very different situation. I got a couple of staggers here, but... Nothing that's going to keep overtime going any longer. Play now on the attacking side. Have a bar to pass. And honestly, I think they're in a pretty good position to do it. The problem with play is that we've seen them with their Rhine Symmetra. Now they have to play dive. And dive is very, very different to how you want to operate, especially on mid-term where you have a couple of questions on where you want to be able to rotate. Do you want to go straight for the point? Do you want to try and go towards tunnel where you know the backline's going to be playing a little bit safer? Or do you want to try and push the DPS off of the steps up to train because you know that if you don't rotate cleanly and you go straight for point or backline and you leave someone behind for even just an iota of a second and the DPS is still in control of steps on train carriage, one of your squishies is going down early. Those rotations have been difficult for them, not just in this map, but in the previous mm -hmm. map as well, right? Constantly losing one player in the back line every time they tried to go for some sort of dive. The situation looks like it's going to be much the same this time. Alexi will remain largely uncontested on the Ash if they stay on the high ground. Play has one TP, and they could send it towards Andreco or Alexi as long as they keep those players separated. They'll be all right, but Alexi sides better than the Ash. the Diva. I would be expecting the D.Va too, but it looks like TVND is actually going to be coming out on the Junker Queen and Play are going to do the exact same thing that they tried on Control Point. And that's Symmetra, no there it is, Symmetra TP out of spawn, swap towards the Tracer and then just run this Junker Queen as quickly as possible. But you have absolutely nothing to really contest when that dive properly comes through other than the burden nade from Keo and the knife from TVNT. Yeah, the river crossing that they're engaging in now is through rough waters, to say the least. Yeah, immediately losing one momentum. Far too vulnerable. No matter what main support you're playing, it's just difficult to get them across that road. Yeah, I mean, you can try it on the Lucio, but then you don't have that dive feel in the form of something like the Brigida. If you use the Junk Queen shout too early to be able to rotate, Rafa Races are just going to smell blood in the water because that's your main tool of burst sustain when this dive properly decides to oh. hit in. And now Look you've this. lost the Brigida oh, and yet again we're going to see the split. This poor guy, I mean, just cannot catch a break. Momentum does manage to somehow make the crossing despite all the damage being thrown at them, despite the spawn being cut off by Raspberry Racers. Now Raspberry Racers have to contend with a pretty tricky position. Put tick and a half being given away now. A nano boost up, and they're gonna need to use it if they want to invest in this fight early. The car separating away the defensive back line of play from that aggressive front line, putting a lot of damage down onto momentum, but the health bars just refuse to hit zero. Primal Rage is needed to finally top or topple over the likes of that Brigida. There's still so much left in the tank here for play. Alexi left with a critical decision. Do we want to use this EMP? They do, but there's no follow-up mocks, and unfortunately, it's just going to fall on deaf ears. Finally, Raspberry Racers try and pull a couple of spawns in to finish off some low health bars, but play have stabilized. Clyde's got that pulse bomb, though. Unfortunately, not going to be able to use it. Well, will be able to use it. Deadeye traded for pulse bomb now that the Cassidy is immobile, and Raspberry Racers still trying to contest. They do have the rally if they want to play sustainability, but somehow, with the healing that they have available, they haven't even needed to dig in to use it. Oh, Raspberry Racers. I found a sick re-engage. I was so worried about that EMP. It looked like it really wasn't going to be enough, but they held that pressure just long enough 
to get the Winston back in the fight and do the real critical damage. Now minute 44 and things are looking dire for play. Kira just didn't want to use Deadeye in case that EMP cancelled it early, and as a result, Rapid Racers found the end. Even though Deadeye was charging up, Cloud had the spacing to be able to take the Cassidy down and invite the Burden Aid. That's your main counter to the dive engagement gone, and play yet again are potentially going to lose a player to this really long rotation. And if they lose a player to this long rotation, though, they're not going to get them back in tax after this fight. The upside is that if they can get this crossing, they've got a lot of nice ultimates to take this re-engage with. Bulking up that Junker Queen with the rally, sending her in with the Rampage, but unfortunately the Rampage just doesn't hit much of anything. Gustav's got momentum. A trade on to Andreco from a Hail Mary Pulse Bomb out of the back pocket of Swag Money does give them a Snowball's chance at re-engaging this, but they've only got the one angle to do it from, and that one angle is walking directly into an EMP from Alexi. Great follow-up by Raspberry Racers. Spells the doom of play who only have 45 seconds now. Reflex going to have a Kitsune Rush. Kyo can try to use it to bolt that Deadeye, but Cloud is going to be approaching a Pulse Bomb to be able to counter the Cassidy ultimate, and Jaycaro has all of the stall Raspberry Racers need. They don't even need to play to wait for play to walk on to point. They can literally just pick apart this team in rotation, keep them pressured so they run out of time on their own two halves. That's what I want to see, exactly what you're talking about. Cut off that rotation with the Primal Rage, then use the Pulse Bomb once the team's been picked apart. See if they execute on that. Raspberry Racers pop the primal right when that rotation comes in. Keep the brig out of the safe rooms. They've been too greedy in doing so, though. Jay Carr is taken down. The pulse bomb does connect, but not without cost. They have traded two for one and got themselves a point cap over here on A. But there is a lot of map to go yet on Midtown. <sighs> So much time has been burnt off the clock. At least they do have Deadeye to potentially zone Raspberry Racers and clear up this high ground so that Kyo or even Reflect can try and pick apart one of these players from the side of Raspberry Racers before this next fight begins. Because Dor, let's be honest, they need to have a fast push for B to make up for the absolute mountain it took to climb point A. Yeah, we talked about how much time Raspberry Racers lost on their A push, but that was a lot more for play and a, a devastating amount that costs them a lot in terms of ultimate snowball potential like you were talking about they don't have a good position here on this point either because they weren't able to find any early picks they tried really hard mm. to look for them there overextended following their a cap looking for something on the high ground so that they could go forward and claim it later but when they came up empty hand and now they're just gonna be fighting into the high ground into a dive composition which is about as nightmarish as it gets <laughs> Yeah, and you can't even really try and be greedy with this Deadeye, right? Because, well, you know, there's an Anna on the other side. There's a sleep dot scripted with your name on it if you're not too careful in how you position. And even then, you have to worry about things like the Sombra hack or the Winston bubble just getting in the way of the spacing. And herein lies the problem. When you run a Junker Queen, the reason why we see so many teams paired up with a Lucio is so that you don't have to use the shout early to be able to put yourself into actually being able to position into a fight. Raspberry Racers can literally run laps around you with how mobile this uh, composition is in comparison. Yeah. I mean, this dead eye, I, I think it's kind of dead in the water. Um, large part. So is swag money? That's That doesn't happen often. The is that a dead sleep body into on the floor. pulse bomb? I think I it think might have it been a sleep into been. self pulse bomb. Either way, this one's uh, a little jover for play. They'll <laughs> walk that one back for the next 10 seconds. That's really unfortunate. You need... Oh, we're going to get to oh, save. No! Slip. no! Oh, 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 God! Wait. <laughs> Oh, it was a bonk! Oh, wow! It was! Oh, it oh was one two a combo sleep from the back line of Raspberry Racers. Bonk onto Pulse Bomb. That's messed up. That's kind of cruel. But Andreko Gustav, hats off. Next engagement looks just as well with an early nano boost having been thrown in. Play still don't have ultimates, but that Deadeye and that thing, I mean, it's, it's dead in the water. Deadeye is a glorified reload button into dive compositions. Yeah, so here's the problem because Play have now lost two fights back to back before they've actually been able to do much of anything in terms of damage department. They're now running into an EMP. Jay Carr is just set up, already expended that jump cooldown to be able to put himself into a position where he's going to be able to cleave and drop down onto all of these players. And it's the exact same thing we saw from point A in their last rotation. Choke and suffocate these rotations from play so that they lose even more time. Oh, Raspberry Racers, I mean, they're trying to set up for this EMP. Player counterplaying it well by putting themselves in avoidable places where they can get away from that EMP, but cloud down, there's no follow up. Raspberry Racers know that there's a little time on the clock, knows there's only one fight left, we'll just take a reset. Yeah, I mean, they've been able to burn out one ultimate as well. Kyo's Deadeye removed. Raspberry Racers were just a little bit of frat. 
positioning Cloud towards the Cassidy to force him into using it early. And Alexi now is just waiting to actually throw the EMP in. Just goes for the casual hack onto the Tracer. And as a result, there's plays maneuvering around the payload. I mean, this is nigh on impossible, right? For play to find your way through this would be to find a needle in a haystack. Or a hay in a stack of needles. It's a far more arduous and painful task. And as formerly mentioned, the EMP just looming in the wings. I do want to see Raspberry Racers use this aggressively. Because that Tracer's now back. They've allowed the 5v5 to go down instead of taking advantage of the 4v5 that they basically had handed to them earlier on. They don't want to play them to the rally in case it gets stunned out. I suppose so. That rally's now gone. As is a lot of tools. The Rampage, I think, got cancelled. The EMP comes out. The rally now from Raspberry Racers makes them ever stronger. A Primal Rage they could use even later in this fight to sustain through. Player just out of tools. It's checkmate at the final door here on B. Raspberry Racers will be likely taken away Midtown in the following seconds. Yeah, it's literally just clean up on aisle two at the moment as Raspberry Racers still have ultimates to be able to throw in to the tank. This is the planning that went through this team's head when they saw how much time had been chunked down from point A. The second that we moved into point B and there's sub two minutes left available, Raspberry Racers just burn ultimate positioning player respawns off of the time bank available, knowing that even if the rally is out, they just don't want to throw an EMP. They've still got time. They're still going to be able to out sustain. They can live through and cancel that rampage. And as a result, they can just continue to suffocate plays. Any power play that this team could make just gone before that payload was able to hit the second checkpoint. And everything that you bring up has to do with the macro play from Raspberry Racers, right? And I think what that is, I mean, in large part, just the experience that this team brings in. One more, one more time to appreciate that. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, the macro play that Raspberry Racers bring to the table is to do with that experience, right? They're so calm in these situations. They're so willing to play the time and understand that they can just win fights later when it's more important. On, on one hand, yes, player matching them bar for bar. I would say, mm. if not more than that, in terms of mechanics, keo has been a monster damage-wise. Has topped the lobby by a significant margin for a very long time. But unfortunately, that's just not enough to see you through fights that aren't winning in terms of ultimates, in terms of positioning, in terms of setup from previous fights. Yeah, and here's the thing again with this composition, right? When you're running up against an Anna, a Brigida, and a Winston, all of whom have tools of just stalling out a fight, even if you're down players. And that was another thing that Raspberry Racers were able to use to really good advantage. If they knew that Nana Boost was online and someone was getting pressured and wouldn't be able to actually keep that line of sight, Nana Boost would come out and they'd be able to hold position. Same for things like Primal and Rally. Every single time play wanted to make an aggressive move, Raspberry Racers were there first, forcing their hand, forcing them to wait, and then allowing play the actual opportunity to be able to use an ultimate only when Raspberry Racers were either in position to be able to survive it or in position to be able to aggressively counter it with something of their own. Yeah, well, look, play do have a lot of tricks up their sleeve. They have a lot of ways to counter things, but see if they've got enough tricks up their sleeve to try and reverse sweep this one after the break. You like solving problems. Problems like how to stop that tracer from deleting your backline. I know just what you're thinking. Go bring a turret. But y'all can't solve all your problems by simply bringing an extra friend to the battlefield. For that, you need the Contender's Torbjorn skin. Solve your problems by connecting your Battle.net account to Twitch. After that, watching Overwatch Contender Summer Series will contribute to your drops progress, letting you claim your Overwatch Contender's Torbjorn skin. Even your turret gets an upgrade. Warning, the Overwatch Contender Torbjorn skin does not come with extra or upgraded turrets. Build instructions will not be provided. By picking Torbjorn, you wave a claim towards any destroyed turrets. No refunds, no exchanges, and no take backsies.
Hey, howdy, and welcome back, everybody. We are coming into map number three of our first series of the day. Things are looking up for Raspberry Racers, who I think you guys predicted to win this one. Play, though, on the other hand, need a way out, and they are screaming, Circa Royale, please help me. I am just a little bit concerned, though, because the, the one problem that we saw play struggle with most of all, not mechanicals, not ultimate usage, was rotations and losing players early. And Circuit Royale might be one of the most punishing maps in the current Overwatch climate. But when you lose a fight and you have to walk back into another one and another one and another one and another one and another one after that. Yeah, and it, you know, usually it wouldn't be that big of a problem because you're running the Sigma, but I don't think either of these teams are intending to run Sigma. In fact, we've seen a lot of teams shift away from it in terms of Circuit Royale. I think we've seen less Sigma than uh, Ramatras, than yeah. Monkeys, than a lot of other picks on Circuit Royale this season for one reason or another. I mean, they're just kind of shifting away from it. And as we say that, play puts in Groink. Yeah, are we going to see the return of the Symmetra Rhine composition? I'm really hoping that we're going to see, if it does come through, a second game plan. If that initial TP strategy just does not pan out. Because we saw what happened, right? Every single time they lost the same, every single time they got one player just too pressured to actually be able to properly commit to that teleport everybody from play backed off. And I don't mean like backed off a little bit. I mean backed off entirely from every single off angle, applying any sort of pressure onto Raspberry Racers when they were running just DPS super aggressively, almost towards play every single time a choke was in control. Yeah, as well, Pax is going to come back in. The other swap here for play. It's mission critical, though, that they're able to get onto that back line. I mean, it's been a struggle the entire time, right? Dive just mm -hmm. jumps onto you. It's pretty straightforward, but... For these compositions that want to brawl, want to rush on maps that aren't Winston maps, or, or that are more more vulnerable to the dive, I suppose, is probably the better way to put it. It's just such a uh, difficult, right? You go on this, like, seven-day odyssey just to kill one member of the backline, and, like, sometimes yeah. it just doesn't even matter that much. Mentally, it's a lot for these teams, because play, you can tell, they're putting a lot into these fight plans, into being creative with their routing, into making sure that they're taking the correct pathing to avoid being split off by the dive as much as possible. But sometimes it's just not working for them. And try as they might, they can only go so many routes, especially on a Circuit Royale, where it's one route. There's no <laughs> side lanes to take on this map. It is a singular road in a singular direction, save for maybe point B, which is the best point on this map for the Reinhardt in a lot of ways. Uh, it's going to be a struggle. But like I said, point B is a silver lining that I need to see them take advantage of. Yeah, there are a couple of detours that you can take, but they're costly. And that is something that we've seen Raspberry Racers capitalize on time and time again. Every single time play have had to slow things down by taking these quote unquote safer rotations to try and save out on losing players early. It has eaten into their time bank and Raspberry Racers have taken advantage at a later date as we can... Uh... <laughs> We can see that, yeah, I agree. Swag money for ain't got no swag when he got put to sleep and pulse bumped himself. Great play from Andreco. Honestly, that's probably the the most in terms definition of a, a sleight of hand nat 20 that I've ever seen played in Overwatch. Yeah, it was also just like the sick little one two alley oop. Like the, it wasn't just Andreco. Don't be wrong, Andreco hit the nat 20, but the. The, the boop from follow Busta? up the teamwork, yeah, recognizing that they were a little bit too far from the pulse bomb to like, oh, I'll just nudge you, a, nudge you a little closer there. Why don't you go ahead and take a look at your pulse bomb, inspect it a little closer for me, you Ten know? Ten pin bowling with traces. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the Reinhardt does come out here for play. It's a close hold to be paired with the Symmetra. Raspberry Racer is tasked with beating this, but they bring a Widowmaker to the party. See if Alexi can hit a critical shot here. There's no May either from the side of play to be able to just wall Raspberry Racer. Oh, that'll do it! And Alexi finds back, and without that Symmetra, play's mobility is cut off entirely. I feel like that momentum this time is going to be on the Lucio, but that Ryan just doesn't have enough sustainability. Yeah. I mean, one pick is just enough in these situations. As well, the Symmetra was a lot of the damage that was actually holding them inside that door that Cassidy was monitoring for the Widowmaker. And granted, did kill her eventually, but maybe a little bit too slow. A couple of trades will come in from play, but nothing impactful. And this is where it's going to get concerning for play, right? Because you've now lost where the Reinhardt is going to be at its most powerful, at least for the beginning part of point A. The longer and clearer that these sightlines become, 
the more room that Groink has to be able to navigate into these fights. At least Alexi is actually going to be sticking on the Widowmaker, not going for something with a traditional shield break catalyst to its name. Yeah, and I, again, this makes sense, right? You're trying to cut away a lot of that back line, not hard TP engage onto these teams as often as you can. You want to hold these corners, look for picks. Lexi doing exactly that. Playing all around with the angle, looking for any sort of weakness in the back line of play. Any player stepping even marginally out of position is a vulnerability that Raspberry Racers will look to take advantage of. As they start their way forward, though, play. Think of a TP. The rest of the team doesn't seem on board with it. Primal Rage now is a sense of urgency to play, who respond with a dead eye, but not much has really gone down. This this fight's been a real nothing burger, Mox. Ooh, that's a lamp forced by a pulse bomb, and as a result, Raspberry Racers finally get to make the dive that they've been looking for. This is another characteristic of dive, right? That first jump is never the actual aggressive play. It is always just Jaykari taking a little bit of damage, face tanking, building up Andreiko's ultimate charge so that with the Nana boost, you're properly sustained and cushioned with that damage reduction to be able to hold your grind and finally challenge this death ball brawl composition that player wanting to set into motion that's never actually been able to get off the ground so far. As Ray Racers now making a couple swaps, go over to the Ash to break their way out of spawn here. Play one an aggressive fight, and it's an aggressive fight they'll get. We stop being forced back, but I do like this early hold. Sound barrier engage seems desperate. Uh, I would say out of play. They're trying to find something out of this engagement. They do get it. Alexi's caught out, and you know what? It's worked out despite my own grievances. It was a really messy play, but it worked. Yeah, and this is actually going to be great for play in this next engagement because what they've done is they've been able to buy themselves space so that when we see things like the Shatter or the Amplification Matrix come out, it's going to burn time off of Raspberry Race's overall bank and make up for how fast that point A push actually was. The problem is that Alexi sees the player trying to control all of that space for those two ultimates and opts onto the Sojourn to be able to just power slide onto an off angle. Yeah, Sojourn's mean here. Look at that just instantly slides away from the teleporter. Great block as well on the shatter. Frank's now in no man's land. His lamp is out as well. A lot of resources are gone here for play, and a rush composition on the back foot is never in a comfortable position. They can maybe try and find a re-engage here, but I mean it's difficult at best, especially with the teleporter missing. Raspberry Racers are gonna claim a lot of space, if not the fight here off the back of a nano boost. Oh, and that's Nana Boost Winston denying the space of the Ant Matrix that Play were looking to stem the bleeding with. Look how skillfully J. Carter was able to still get a bunch of primal damage off and avoid the Deadeye at the same time. That is so difficult to do with the limited range of those Winston arms. It'll eventually go down, but the space has been taken, the cart progress has been gained in Play, or can be able to take a re-engage until Grunk gets back here. Yeah, they can't risk it. They know that Alexi is in position to just be able to chunk these players down and try and find that one-shot relic on all fire as Jaykaru comes back on the Wrecking Ball. How do I feel about the Wrecking Ball? It feels like they were trying to extend the fight with this Wrecking Ball. Winston would have been, I think, a lot more comfortable in this situation, but they made the swap. They're going to have to live with it. A big boop! Oh my god! Reflect went miles away! Got sent into another zip code, Mox! How did that happen? I mean, when you run into someone with that much momentum, ironically enough, you don't pick up the Lucio, but you definitely pick up the Baptiste, and this is where the Hammond is actually at its most punishing. Remember, play plays so closely together that every single time Jaycar actually activates the Wrecking Ball shields, he's always finding max value with them. He even anticipates the charge for going to try to intercept the payload and steps in front of it. I think intercepting the charge is maybe a generous term for what happened there, but... Nevertheless, a teleport into the back line is attempted. Distracts Alexi for a moment. Gives actually a lot of time for play to come in. Immortality Field's been forced though, and they're slowly but surely running out of resources. The re-engage just wasn't there following the TP. And again, we're I, I think I've seen maybe one player take Pax TPs this entire mm. map. I think they're just too scared to do it. They, they, they saw what happened, right, in the past where, yeah, they, okay, they I've been, I've been corrected here in this one, but shield, even that didn't go well. And they just get well. Yeah. And this is, again, what the Sojourn takes full advantage of. If you're playing around this Reinhardt shield, the second that it breaks, you're going to have it all fire up and you're going to take one of these squishies down. And it's something that play have to play conservatively around knowing. There's nothing conservative about the ultimates that are up right now. Plenty of tools for either side. Going for a boot now. 
to be too successful in doing so, but the mines will lock them to the outside corridors of Circuit Royale, which only gets worse. Remember, the cart the is still, still moving. moving! The payload's going! Guys, the cart! Guys! No, no way. Oh my goodness, it's not a C9, but it feels just as egregious. That is 90% of point C on Circuit Royale having been given up. Still no retort from play as they spent two ultimates just trying to make their way back to the cart. A third trying to recontest it, but Raspberry Razor still have gas in the tank, and Nano Boost onto Jaycaru puts a ton of damage onto the back line, not to mention Groink, who's still trying to find some sort of recourse back against them, but it's just not there. Andreco finally goes down, but Raspberry Racers have created one of the most chaotic fights I've ever seen on this map. Play might be able, with those faster respawns, to be able to regain control of this fight. But the problem is it's only going to be temporary. Alexia is going to be coming in with an overclock momentum and reflect both incredibly far away from ultimates to be able to counteract it. And Raspberry Racers have the means of just being able to sustain through these fights until either Gustav's Rally is up or Jaycar has got the hammer mines to be able to immediately claim that space. Yeah, the, the charge here ultimates wise is a lot higher for Raspberry Racers like you mentioned, but it's to the point where it's still difficult to measure. Tracking plays ultimates through that last bit of chaos would have been very difficult. So Raspberry Racers I think are going to approach this quite tentatively despite having an advantage when they get their ultimates up. Earth's starting to build towards mines though. Lexi likely will be the go button with that overclock. It's just a matter of time. 97, 98, 99% for the soldier and a dive in. That's it, overclock pop. Play, don't have any ultimates up to respond. They try to teleport in, but again, it's only pack. Lexi now is high ground and overclock. This likely spells doom for play. Oh, the power slide past the Rhine Shield to be able to take Groink down. Reflex gonna try and go for the Kira Crow swap, but there's no one alive to be able to swift step to. And Raspberry Racers, it's so clean from them. They understand that everyone on the side of play is going to be incredibly wary of that overclock coming through, that they're going to be playing behind the Rhine Shield. And what does Jay Caro do in that engagement when the fight starts? He's not looking for a knock. If he finds the moment, he's absolutely going to go for one. No, the really important play that he actually makes is he pile drives the squishies behind Groink's shield into view of Alexi's overclock, and that's where the blood buff begins. I mean, it was a phenomenally organized dive, but just as much so was the one that happened before, where mm. Raspberry Racers never actually won a fight. They just got, you know, 90 meters of car off. progress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got like, the play tape out. It was a do not cross line. But again, that's, that's the creativity that we've been getting out of Raspberry Racers this entire series. It hasn't been individual playmaking that's got them across this finish line. It's been opportunistic fight taking yeah. that's gotten them here and that's exactly what that was they're always known for this as well i don't know if you remember all the way back in it was like season one or two of contenders last year raspberry racers had some of the cleanest watch point gibraltar point a approaches because they would literally just backflank through the stairs to be able to push the entire team of them onto the defenders off of that high ground so they would really quickly be able to take their claim on that ground as Ashford Racers are going to be running the traditional mode of composition on Circuit Rail when you're defending. Jake Arrow on the Sigma, Alexi and Clyde both picking up double sniper to be able to chunk down growing shield i like this time that we're seeing pack though on the may because this means that the may will can actually survive with the rhine shield and that symmetra teleporter maybe being there for the rest of the team to be able to actually access oh you, you thought this map was hard to play on defense with reinhardt boy howdy wait till you figure out how difficult it is to walk into those teleporters are the only way forward for play. Speed boosting into all this damage, into all this poke that Raspberry Racers are offering up is not an option. Period, hands down, end of end of story. Likes to continue to poke away, but Raspberry Racers are seeding quite a bit of space to play in hopes that they're able to find a pick while they're in rotation, but they haven't been able to. A nice anti-nade does assist from Andreco, but I think that lack of any sort of then Yada is really hurting them in terms of the level of poke that they can actually put out. Yeah, and they're taking too much poke. Play had to immediately after taking that teleporter throw in the immortality field because the poke game from Raspberry Racers is just that much stronger. And yes, it does come with the silver lining that Reflex going to have the amplification matrix faster, but Raspberry Racers have the means of just being able to continue poking through the window as we can see lovely grapple shots 
coming through from Alexi Circuit, where I was known as one of Widow's best maps at the moment in Overwatch for a reason. Asperger is again beginning their disengage procedure, slowly giving up the space, which play claim. I have a teleporter though, where's it going? Kyo's already got it loaded up. Can they Andrei find Andreko's in such a frame, weird so position? He teleport. He's gonna be able to oh. lob the Antony behind them! Oh! And it completely connects! Gravitic Flux takes down the remainder of the health bar. His fortunately, Immortality Field keeps the majority of play alive. But there is still so much damage going into that one small room. And the cart's not moving forward. They will help their approach forward with this Photon Barrier. But how much more can they realistically get done here? They have no gap closers. They try for another teleport play, but it's piecemeal at best. Oh my goodness, that read from Andreko. They understand that when you have that access, that you only have bridge control from a team with a Symmetra teleport, the only teleport location that they can safely go to to avoid that poke damage coming through from Rust Racers is directly below the door frame. And Andreko with a little bit of parkour is able to make his way that with the anti. Ooh. Something that play hopefully don't fall for again as Lex goes a little bit too gung-ho. Uh, yeah, definitely overstayed their welcome trying to hold out, but the dragon seems to have done his job. Completely but clutched that's away a lot of two ultimates. players. That's Dragon Strike and Nano Boost. And now Alexi coming on to the Sojourn to be able to get back into the fight faster. Pack's going to have the Blizzard, Groint's going to have the Shatter. If they're able to actually find themselves the spacing to be able to properly use these, they should be able to find some form of value. But Dor, that's where the problem lies. Are they going to have the spacing to even be able to get close? Are Raspberry Racers going to pick them apart before the fight uh, even begins? Calling my shot now, Jay Carter reads this, please. No! Didn't Kinetic Grass towards the May! Kinetic Grass the way! Lucky oh, stuff. There. It would have stopped up. No, no, no. They walled off Jay Karu with it. Like, Jakaru was on the correct side of the wall, but nevertheless, it's not a, a fight you expect Raspberry Racers to take away. There was a clutch play opportunity, but unfortunately just not there. Play now have to work their way up the hill, and they do have ultimates to do it. Yeah, the problem is that they're still going to be climbing up a hill, and they now have a significantly lower time bank because of how long it took them to be able to secure a point A. Working their way up, they will be cut off now by a Gravitic Flux. Half HP on each of these players. Where's the follow-up from play? A rock from above? A flying Sigma? That'll do it. Gustav helps out as well, putting in a little bit of poke damage. Raspberry Racers have turned one ultimate into one fight win. A very efficient take for them. One that they needed considering play have a ton up of their own. My hypothesis stands strong. Any tank can be a dive tank as long as you fall from a high enough distance. Exactly. Immortality Field gets baited out. It's the only thing that play have in the pocket to be able to deal with the Sigma Flux, and as a result, the Ad Accretion just lands onto so many of them. Momentum not going to have the Sign Barrier. May will has to be used to make sure that Rusted Racers are able to not find a pick as play teleport towards slope and drop out. An Ant Matrix stare down turns into a cloud down. Can they keep that Hanzo alive? No is certainly the answer there. Gustav, just not enough heals in the tank. Alexi slides away. 45 now for Raspberry Racers. They're looking for more. They want to pressure out this Reinhardt. Remember, they're a Hanzo short, which would have been a lot of the damage that would have been there to punish Groink from doing charges like that. Now, where do you actually find picks from? Well, Kyo's an option. Certainly, they caught the mid-teleporter while they were trying to get out. And that's the opportunity they really need. Raspberry Racers can afford the loss of Andreko, considering that they still have another flex support up their sleeve and plenty of space to hold with this Sigma. Play used lamp though, and Dragon Strike now leaves them open because they're gonna get Sigma Flux right into it! It is a decent uh, expense of Raspberry Racers, having thrown in two ultimates there, but they've still got plenty left. Well, Raspberry Racers have the thing that they're going to prioritize over ultimate economy and a team that is just so problematic with rotations. They've got control of high ground slope, they've got overclock, they're going to have a nano boost. They have sustainability if they lose a player and the fight goes too long. They've got an overclock to be able to blitz play down and force them into using either the blizzard to zone or momentum sound barrier early on. Either way, when overtime hits, that's the races are going to be in far more control. Last chance here for play. They've got ultimates on deck, but you're really looking at momentum to be the one to land the critical ultimate. Sound barrier, can they turn it into an engage? They sound barrier from quite a ways back. Closing the gap on the Raspberry Racers, yeah, it's just not easy. You're crossing the battlefield into an overclock, into an Alexi overclock. At that, far easier said than done. Eventually, they shut it down, but at what cost? Raspberry Racers now throwing in an amplification matrix. They have a lot of tools. I cut off from using it by a blizzard. 
Cloud on the other side still continues to just rain hell from above. This Hanzo uncontested now should be able to clean up the rest of this fight. Raspberry Racers, your victor's taking the series three to zero. Yeah, Blizzard came down, but unfortunately, Raspberry Racers has had too much control on the off angles. Cloud paddling out towards tent was entirely untouched by the May Ultimate. And as a result, is more than capable of being able to turn around and dispatch with anyone trying to just keep themselves on the card. And again, that is what Ravra Racers were able to take full advantage of, forcing abilities and ultimates out too early from the side of play because of how problematic and vulnerable the composition that they've run is in terms of rotations. When I saw them pick Circuit, I thought to myself, oh no, they're going to try and Ryan Sim TV this and it's going to have to work out the first time that they use it, and it's going to have to continue to work out the first time that they use it. Otherwise, Circuit World is not going to go in their favor. It's too easy to be able to predict the pathing. Yeah, it's difficult, but nevertheless, Raspberry just had the counterplay, not just with one comp, but with two. We saw Jay Carter mm -hmm. play three tanks across the series, which is honestly like, we gotta give him praise. That Sigma was solid. The Orisa yeah. looks great. Jaycar has come to the table with a lot more flexibility than I think people give him credit for as of late. And it's put on a really strong performance that allowed Raspberry Race. Oh no, four tanks played the ball too. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, across the board, great stuff from Jaycar and putting up some, some really impressive flexibility for somebody who was playing basically just one tank last season. Yeah, really good trust as well from Raspberry Races. It takes a lot from a team to be able to properly understand that maybe you don't want to throw an ultimate in because you're going to prioritize having it in the next fight, but it takes even more to throw an ultimate into a fight where you've essentially already won, but you're just trying to prioritize holding that position because you have that much trust in your DPS being able to come through, hit those shots and properly make that positioning count. And that is something that we saw time and time again from this team. They prioritize holding those positions when they were on the defense and time and time again the entire team was able to really reap the rewards of those spaces where teams can just be entirely shut down off of the spacing a defensive team holds alone yeah, and the rewards are plenty i mean a wait a win is massive and i feel like that's an understatement right when we're talking about raspberry races and where they're sitting in the table it means a ton to them and honestly i think we should just go ahead and talk to jay karu following this break about what he thinks about their big win Oh, hello! Fancy meeting you here! It's so nice to see ya! Are you ready to survive the wastelands? Then you'll need to bring your shotgun, your axe, and of course, your knife! For your sharp wit, if you get my drift. Hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on there! Don't forget to pick up your Overwatch Contender's Junker Queen skin! Yeah! Gearing up is as easy as connecting your Battle.net account to Twitch! And after that, watching the Overwatch Contender Summer Series will contribute to your drop progression! Letting you claim your own wasteland-ready Overwatch Contender's Junker Queen skin! Oh, that's right! It's time to rampage! Now, get out there and slay with the Overwatch Contender's Junker Queen skin! Okay, take care now. See you in chat.
And welcome back, everybody. As promised, we got Jay Caro in for an interview. Jay Caro, first off, congrats on the win. I'm sure it feels really good to start climbing your way up that leaderboard. It's an important one for you guys, but it was claimed in, uh, I think, an interesting fashion. You guys had not just interesting compositions. You played everything under the sun, not to mention the, the Sigma that came out at the end that looked really good, but also had some really incredible fight planning where, I mean, Mox and I caught you a million times winning fights through just the most ridiculous means. That notably... Uh, that push at the end of C on Circuit Royale, where you guys ended up getting, what, 90% of C without actually having taken an Elim the entire time? What's going into that? Who's calling those those kind of ridiculous creative plays? The Onanate as well that we saw on um, so the TP? Like, who's coming up with this stuff? Honestly, it's just like, it's just freestyle. It's just happening, you know? I don't think we're actually, we're not talking too much about doing these in that phase. It just sort of happens. Uh, and I, I didn't even know about Andrejko doing that flank for the nade, so he was just he was just chilling. And he just did it freestyle. So. so obviously we're seeing a lot of teams in this region, especially try to run this Reinhardt composition alongside the Symmetra with SRP check probably having the most success. Is there something you feel like that team is doing that's different to some of these other teams that's allowing them to actually find a lot more value with this composition? I think the difference with SR Peep Check is that they've got Dunhead and Dunhead has the Symmetra gene implanted in him. So he just can do things on Sim, which I, I mean, the main thing with SR Peep Check is once you've killed one person, they will just trade and then they're just back in the fight like instantly. Like it seems like they have tens of like five second respawns or something. They're just instantly back in the fight and you can never cleanly finish a fight unless you just invest too many ults than it's worth. I think that's yeah. the thing with SR Peep Check. I mean, clearly you guys learned something from your engagement with SRP. Check. What did you take coming into this match, knowing full well that you'd be playing into the Sim Ryan again? What did you learn? What did you try to adjust? Well, honestly, I thought I'd only be playing Winston, uh, but then I ended up playing four different heroes. So I guess it's uh, being more confident in switching the sort of way I think about the game. So instead of like... Because against Rush, normally when you're on Winston, you just play slow and you get Nano, and then when you have Nano, then you engage. But with Ball, you can just skip out the neutral completely and just go in and engage and, and try and win the fight off that. Yeah, can I touch uh, on that a bit further? I, we expect, you know, obviously with last season playing with Wisp, having such an incredible performance on the Winston, being one of the best Winston that we've got here. What was your expectation coming into the season, what you'd be playing? Because you've been pretty flexible, all things considered. Even the Sigma coming out, that looked by all means, plenty good. Yeah, I mean, right now the meta in our is just uh, everyone's playing Winston, so I would expect I would just play Winston, but I do think the quality in, contend in EU contenders isn't as high, so it can allow you to just play ball and get away with it. So, and then Midtown, uh, not Midtown, uh, Circuit is Sigma, so I'm like, if you're not playing Sigma on Circuit, you're trolling, like how we were we were trolling in World Cup, only playing Monkey, but um, yeah, I I, I I want to be more uh, to play more because it's just kind of boring playing Winston all the time. I, I I've been calling for a ball meta for ages. Like I really <laughs> want to play ball again. So I'm happy I got to show off a little bit of my ball gameplay today. So then talking about another tank that you actually got to show off, when uh, we saw TV and T actually pull out the Junker Queen, you want Arisa to be able to counter it. What does it uh, change when you're running Orisa to be able to counter the Junker Queen in terms of how your team actually has to engage as opposed to when you're running with the Winston? Uh, honestly, I, d I think the Orisa was, was kind of sucked. Uh, I shouldn't have gone Orisa at that point. I don't think it actually counters the Queen. The main thing I went Orisa for was because they had Queen uh, Rampage. pass, pass yeah. break. They had like three different things and, and a Curie, so it's just... it's. Bad for Bull, bad for Winston. It's like you can only really play like Ram, Queen, or or Arisa, and I feel more comfortable on Arisa, so I just went Arisa. Well, I Do mean, you think I we're am... gonna see then a potential change up onto the Arisa if we see uh, contenders and playoffs go on to the current live patch? Yeah, I've been saying Arisa's low key next up. That 50% fortified damage Crazy. reduction is pretty good. Um, I think it depends on the comp, like we've been trying out different Orisa comps and scrims and stuff and there is one comp which I really like with Orisa, maybe that might actually unironically be good, but we have to wait and see I guess. I mean for you guys the first step is making it to that future, your your strength of schedule is kind of opening up here, there's a lot of opportunity for you guys to pick up wins, what are, what are the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks of contenders looking like? Yeah, we, we, we've been sucking pretty hard the last... The last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you had a really I mean, tough schedule. I gotta... 
We don't like, that, was, that was one of the game, toughest starts anybody had. He took a couple of maps, he took a map of Exo and yeah, uh, but, I mean, it's like It feels like we should be winning those games, like we lose to ourselves, essentially. It's, we make mistakes, we do dumb stuff, and, and the whole like philosophy I wanted to have is to punish other people's dumb mistakes, but it's, it's the other way around. Uh, but I think we're slowly going to get like feeling each other. Like uh, we only had like a few days scrims with each other before contenders as well. So I'm, I'm feeling out the team, and I think we'll get used to each other at any minute now. I mean, today we were a lot better with our uh, teamwork and our talking and our coordination, etc. So um, you know, what's I'm, funny. I'm, I'm happy looking for it. I think I think we'll we'll qualify. We'll win most of our games in the next few weeks you have good things ahead we talked to you at the beginning of last season when you were playing on wisp and you were saying the exact same thing about what what makes you so successful and you said you just did what the all teams do in your scrims to just punish everybody's dumb mistakes and i i think when you get to that point of coordination with a team you really start to unlock it and you guys are improving day after day it'll it'll be there in no time jake Caru. good luck with your next matches man thank you all right, Mox, that leads us with a little bit of standings to go over with our first round having been done for the day. We have had a couple of shift ups, haven't we? Yeah, a couple of shift ups. But um, one thing that I'm sure everyone was expecting, still holding steady. Twisted Minds again continuing an absolute dominant run of contenders. The only team so far going undefeated as Ex Oblivione or yeah, are all going to be sitting themselves on a same oh and SRP check as well all going to be seeing themselves on a 6-1 scoreline yeah, plus 20 is absurd <laughs> plus 20 is ridiculous for twisted they're, they're, they're minds trying to better themselves after after last season <laughs> honestly there's not much bettering themselves that they can do but we can better ourselves we can get ourselves a better match that 3-0 was fun it was a good time it was nice watching the creative play from raspberry racers but there is another one on deck and it looks just as close two teams who are neck and neck in the standings and ataraxia and team peps are coming up in just a bit you guys aren't going to want to miss that one so after this break got that coming up you like solving problems problems like how to stop that tracer from deleting your backline i know just what you're thinking go bring a turret but y'all can't solve all your problems by simply bringing an extra friend to the battlefield for that you need the contenders torbjorn skin solve your problems by connecting your battling account to twitch after that, watch an Overwatch Contender Summer Series will contribute to your drops progress, letting you claim your Overwatch Contender Torbjorn skin. Even your turret gets an upgrade. Warning, the Overwatch Contender Torbjorn skin does not come with extra or upgraded turrets. Build instructions will not be provided. By picking Torbjorn, you wave a claim towards any destroyed turrets. No refunds, no exchanges, and no take-backsies. Mm -hmm. 